Welcome back, Guardians. And I have one question for you, and that's kind of just a general one. Do you guys still play Destiny? Valid question. It's okay if you say no, because my answer is actually no. I, I really don't. I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. Destiny's in its dry spot. I'm not going to call it dead like last time. It's a little bit more alive. But by now, if you're still playing, you should still be wrapping up some of those weapons, things you haven't done yet. If you just got the game for maybe, say, Christmas, go crazy. Let me tell you as a warning, by around the time a new DLC drops or whenever something big happens, uh, be warned, Destiny gets flooded with players. But today, we'll be talking about the Battle of the Twilight Gap. You may have read that on the title. Now, this is one of the biggest battles ever faced by the city, as there have been many battles. The city is never really a safe place, it's the last city on earth and that's where most of the enemies have come to face us. They seem to do that a lot. But this one was bigger than the others. It took place in a place called the Twilight Gap. Now if you're wondering who was fighting, it was mostly the Guardians versus the Fallen. In fact all of the Fallen. One of the Kells of the House of Kings manipulated the different houses of the Fallen. That Kell did something like the Kell of Kells did, Skolas, where he got other houses to somewhat join in. Skolas didn't do so much. This Kel, however, succeeded much more where Skolas did not. You see, Skolas never actually really got to the city, whereas if Skolas were to march on the city, this is probably would be a case of what happened. Now, what the Fallen were actually after was the Traveler. They wanted to control or take the Traveler. I don't know how they could have done that. If I was one of the people sitting on the council, I probably would have sat there and thought to myself, how about we let them see what we do with that? I don't know what getting the Traveler would do. Maybe they thought that was a source of our power, which it is, but it really isn't in a way. I feel like if the Traveler were to go away, would we lose our light? Also, capturing the Traveler, what are you going to do? Are you, are you going to move it, wrap it up, and take it home? I don't, I don't know what you're going to do. But moving forward, the city organized a force of guardians under the Vanguard commander. At the current time, his name was Saladin Forge. You may recognize his name. The Fallen used their walkers. You may have faced them in the very first strike you've ever done. These things, when there's a lot of them, it can be a pain. They dueled against the city's guns. I don't know how powerful those are, but as you know, walkers can be a pain in the ass. Unfortunately, the Twilight Gap was taken or seized by the Fallen. By this time, there's been many loss of life on both sides. However, during this time, Lord Shax led a counterattack, which successfully drove the Fallen from the Twilight Gap. By this time, the Battle of the Twilight Gap was actually finishing up. It may not sound that long, but there really isn't much to it. Within the actual time span that I have gone over in such a short amount of time, many Guardians have died. There's just been constant firefights at the Twilight Gap. Just to clear it up, this is the same place that you have fought at in the Crucible. As you can see, the Traveler is not very far. It is very close to the last city. It is literally just an outpost right outside the walls. So next time you fight there, Make sure to pay homage to your fallen brethren. After the fallen had been completely driven from the city boundaries, there was a guy named Faisal Crux. Now, this guy was a weapon maker. You may not know his name now, but you probably should. He is the one who commemorated all the fallen guardians by forging the Galahorn. But let's stop to talk about the Galahorn. It is year two, January 11th, 2016. I myself, looking up the facts through the Grimoire, find the word Galahorn and think to myself, where the hell did that thing go? I want to say about five months ago, maybe even four. This was the biggest gun in the game, and Bungie successfully has made it completely obsolete. That's impressive. Good job, Bungie. If you're watching it right now, you may think that this gun doesn't really matter. He gave the Galahorn to everyone. That's pretty cool. It's very aesthetically pleasing. I'm sure I'd like to have that hanging up above my fireplace. But other than that, it has no use. But the reason I gave a date was because I wonder if in year 3 the Galahorn is going to get a Galahorn 2.0. It's not out of the question, so let's just keep an open mind. But back to the Grimoire. Faisal Crux made this Galahorn with the armor of the Fallen Guardians. That may sound somewhat morbid. I don't know whether it does or doesn't. In my eyes, I don't see it being bad. It's a good use of the wasted armor. Wasted's a bad word. Of the used armor. But he wasn't the only one that took action after all the fighting was done. Lord Shax, you may also know him, decided to create the Crucible. This is what gave birth to the PvP of Destiny and the many, many, many rage-induced moments. The Crucible had one main objective and one objective only, to train new generation of Guardians. 
to make them prepared for something like this, because Shax thought to himself and said, there is absolutely no way we could ever withstand another attack like that. We need to train, we need to get the good, great, even legendary guardians come forth, show their stuff, and we need to have them on tabs to make sure that if something would ever happen again, we can just call them up and we can actually defend without losing countless and unbelievable, I can only imagine the amount of guardians they lost. There are upwards of about 10 million guardians within Destiny, real life, actual players. I say upwards because I know it's more. I feel like with the Battle of Twilight Gap, that could have knocked out maybe about 70% of Guardians. There was also previous battles. This is the third city battle that was fought. The Guardians are down very low numbers. Keep in mind that maybe it was not 10 million people. That's a lot of people after the Dark Age. If you don't know what the Dark Age was, it was just a terrible time for humanity. I somewhat touch upon that in the video called The Collapse. You can check that out for more details. but. I just want to wrap your head around just how big of losses that were taken. After the battle, the Vanguard also became more proactive. They would prevent the enemy from attacking the city again. They began authorizing major strikes for enemy targets. And the first one you do is Sepix Prime. That is the House of Devils. That was the main house that attacked Twilight Gap, who led the charge, in fact. That was their kill. So I'd say the strike program has been very successful. Except with Praetith Kabar and Bahani, but that's a different story. Now you're wondering, why do we fight at the Twilight Gap? Well, that's for a simple reason, and you can probably figure it out on your own. It's just so that we have an area for the Crucible. It does not act only as a Crucible area to fight in. It is also an outpost. We still use it to this day, and it also has very large guns if you've seen them down by the back side of the map. And should the Fallen ever attack again, we would know, and we'd be ready at this time because I feel like there are a lot better Guardians out there from the Crucible program, and if it ever were to happen, you Guardian will be a part of it. <coughs> DLC. Just a little fun fact for you guys, you may understand this, is that Lord Shax, the guy with the fur coat, looks fabulous, is actually a Master Swordsman. Do not pick a fight with that man, he will destroy you. It's also why he gives you the swords. But anyways, that's been it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later, Guardians.